Welcome to lesson 13a, fan performance. We're going to talk about fan performance, including parameters like shutoff pressure and free delivery. I do exactly the same thing when I teach fluids, except in terms of pumps, we call it shutoff head. This should be reviewed, therefore, from your fluids class. A typical performance curve for either a fan or a pump, but we're going to do a fan here. So we typically plot the head or the pressure. In this case, we'll be plotting pressure. So we'll call this delta P fan. And the little U just means useful. That takes into account the inefficiencies of the fan, what it's actually delivering to the fluid as a function of flow rate Q. And generally, the fan performance curve will look something like this. So it'll start and then go down sort of like a parabola. And we also call this the available fan pressure because this is what the pump can actually deliver. Now, there's a few things on here I want to label. This point right here where the flow rate is zero, uh, we'll call this delta P fan U max or shutoff, the shutoff pressure. But in other words, when your flow is shut off, when you have zero flow of the air, you have some maximum pressure typically. And delta P is the change of pressure across the fan. We also have this point here, which we'll call Q max or Q free delivery. We call this free delivery, meaning there's no pressure. The free delivery point is kind of opposite of shutoff pressure. For free delivery, we have zero pressure, but a maximum flow rate, whereas with the shutoff pressure, we have zero flow rate, but a maximum pressure. And then anywhere in between has to follow that red curve. But this shutoff pressure would be if the duct is completely blocked, so you cannot get any flow rate, so it forces Q to be zero. In this case, the free delivery would be when there's no duct losses at all. In other words, there's no duct. So at shutoff, we have some fan, and normally your fan's producing some flow, but we have some kind of a duct, and let's suppose that duct is completely blocked. So the fan is spinning like mad. So this is a P that's higher than the pressure in front of the fan. It's trying to blow the air this way, but it can't. In other words, the Q equals zero, there's no flow. It's not doing any useful work so the efficiency of the fan is zero since it's doing nothing useful. That's what's happening at the shutoff pressure. The other extreme at the free delivery, that would be a situation where you have this fan and it's spinning. There's no duct at all. So the flow is just coming in and blowing, but there's no pressure drop at all. You don't have any kind of a duct or anything. So again, eta fan equals zero, you're doing nothing useful. In terms of the duct, if you want to just blow air at yourself, you're still doing something useful by blowing that air. But in terms of pushing flow through a duct, you're not doing anything useful there. In between, there'll be some maximum efficiency somewhere in the middle. We'll define the fan efficiency as eta fan. All efficiencies are some kind of a useful output divided by a required input. Our useful output turns out to be delta P fan useful times flow rate Q over W dot S, where W dot S is the required shaft power to run the fan. So that's what we have to put in. We have to provide a motor to do that. And then we have the pressure rise across the fan and the flow rate in the numerator. The dimensions of any efficiency is one. There's no dimensions. You can verify the pressure is force per area. Q is volume per time. And then power is work per time, which is force times distance per time. If you put all that together, you end up with one, in other words, dimensionless. You can see that the dimensions all cancel out to one. So this is indeed a dimensionless parameter, this efficiency. And I think you can see at both of these extremes, if you're at the shutoff head, you have a big pressure, but you have no Q. Q is zero. So anytime Q is zero, since Q is in the numerator of the eta, that goes to zero. And the other extreme, if you have free delivery, you have a big Q, but you have zero pressure, zero pressure here. So this again is zero. So the eta is zero in both of those cases. And so what does the efficiency look like then? Well, we know it's anchored here at zero. We know it's anchored here at zero at Q max and at the shutoff. And then it'll have some kind of a curve that typically looks like this. 
it'll have some best efficiency point, we call it. So people use either a star or a BEP. So this is eta max equal eta best efficiency point or eta star. If you happen to be operating at that point, in other words, when you are at this flow rate, so this would be Q star, and this would be the operating pressure, delta P fan U star, you would be operating at the maximum efficiency. And notice the maximum efficiency is not at the maximum flow rate, it's also not at the maximum shutoff head. And I just wanted to mention that because people buy fans, and the same thing applies to pumps, they buy a fan and it says maximum flow rate is 300 CFM, maximum pressure is 200 Pascals. Well, you don't get both of those at the same time. Your actual flow, when you, if you had the maximum flow rate, you're not doing any useful work. And if you had the maximum pressure, you're not doing any useful work. So you're somewhere here, this best, even at best efficiency, you're below Q max and you're below the shutoff pressure. Okay, I have a fan, a blower, and a duct. And so I want to illustrate that if you have a fan blowing and you're not doing any work with it, you're not pushing air through any kind of a duct, it's spinning like mad, but it's not really doing anything useful. So the efficiency is zero. If I put it in a duct, a short duct, and it's doing a little bit of work, you have some flow, I can feel the air coming through. So it's doing a little bit of work. If I have it going through a really long duct, there's more friction, and therefore the flow rate is going to go down. And if I add some kind of a blockage, like a valve, here I'll just use a blockage, the flow rate's going to go down and down and down as the pressure goes up and up. If I completely block it, the fan's spinning like mad, but there's no flow. So this is called the shutoff head. There's a high pressure inside the tube. That's the maximum pressure. So the fan can produce either a maximum flow. This is the fastest flow that you're going to get with no resistance, no friction. Put it in a pipe, a duct. You get both some flow or reduced flow uh, and some head, a little bit of resistance. And if you block it, you get maximum head, but no flow. This is zero efficiency because you're not doing anything useful. And this is zero efficiency because you're not doing anything useful. Now somewhere at some length, there's the optimum at some lower flow speed than maximum, and at some lower pressure than the shutoff pressure, or the shutoff head, but optimum efficiency. So your optimum efficiency point, your maximum efficiency is when you have some flow and some head, but you're not operating at either the maximum flow or the shutoff head, somewhere in between. That's maximum efficiency. So one comment here is that the electrical motor for a fan like this is typically an integral part integral with fan or blower. You have some kind of electric motor that's directly attached to the fan. We have an efficiency associated with the fan and we have another efficiency associated with the motor. So the actual W dot, the electrical power, we'll call that W dot motor that you have to supply to the motor. And so the shaft power is what we use in fluid mechanics, the W dot S. W dot S is actually W dot motor times eta of the motor, and then the shaft power goes to the fan to make a useful pressure rise into the fluid. What we typically do is combine the motor and fan into one unit, because you really can't tell the difference when you have this all put together. You're just going to measure W dot motor, and so we're going to call this eta of the fan motor equal eta fan times eta of the motor. It's kind of an overall efficiency of both of them together. And so that would equal what we defined for eta fan, delta P fan U times Q over W dot S. So this is delta P fan U times Q over the shaft power W dot S. And then from here, eta motor is W dot S over W dot motor and then you see that these W dot S's cancel out. So we can write, finally then, 
eta fan motor, the efficiency of the fan motor combination is delta P fan U times Q over W dot motor. Depending on the fan and the motor, this could be anywhere from sometimes less than 50% all the way up to more than 90%. If we plot W dot motor as a function of flow rate, generally it will look something like this. It'll have some power even when there's no flow, it's still spinning and it typically goes up something like that. Some fans will actually start decreasing. This would typically be in units of watts. Now let's think a little bit more about the required fan pressure curve. We talked about the available that comes from the manufacturer. What about the required? Well, we've already done this actually. We solve the steady state, steady flow energy equation for some control volume from an inlet to an outlet, one to two. And we wrote that in terms of pressure rather than head. And I'm going to just rearrange this. I'm going to put the delta P fan U on the left, put everything else on the right, and regroup things so like terms are together. And then label this. This is term one, term two, term three, and term four. I like this form of the equation because we can say that the fan does four things. Term one, what is it doing? It increases the static pressure, which is from fluid mechanics. That's just the actual pressure. I say increase. Depending on the situation, it actually can be positive or negative. Term two, the velocity pressure term increases the velocity pressure, which is kind of like a kinetic energy term. Again, it can be either positive or negative, depending on whether you're increasing or decreasing the velocity. When we're talking about hoods, remember our control volume one was way out in the room, so the velocity pressure there is practically zero. And then where it exits the control volume at point two, it has a higher velocity. So that's generally a positive number, but it doesn't have to be. Term number three increases the elevation pressure. In other words, that's like a potential energy. That can go either way, depending on whether your outlet is above or below your inlet. This is typically negligible, but I'm including this because I do exactly the same thing in fluids, and then that term is often the most important term when you're pumping water up a hill, for example. Number four, it overcomes irreversible head loss. And because you can't have negative friction, this term is always positive. Let's take a case where we have a hood, and we have maybe a damper, we have a bunch of elbows, we have a fan. And so the flow, as we know from the candle effect, is coming around like this from all directions. This is a wall. And then it's exiting like this. So we have some flow rate Q. And we have some major losses and some minor losses. We know how to solve a problem like this. We generally take a control volume that goes around the whole thing. and cuts through the exit plane. So we call that 2. And we put our 1 somewhere out in the room so that the flow there is practically negligible. The flow rate is Q, but the actual velocity is zero. What's key here is that Q depends on the required and available fan pressure. If I give you a Q, you can solve this. That's what we did before. But if we don't know the Q, all we know is that we have the system and we have a fan. But if we know the available pressure of the fan, we can calculate the required pressure of the fan for various Qs and figure out where these two are the same. And so this determines what we call the operating point. There will be some particular Q, Q operating, where these two curves will cross each other. That brings me to a discussion about matching the fan to the requirements of the duct system. So let's look at both aspects, the required fan pressure. How do we get that? We use our SSSF energy equation. And we're going to neglect the change in elevation since this is air. And so we're talking about increasing the static pressure, the velocity pressure, and overcoming head losses here. We'll call this required because that's what's required to increase the pressure, to overcome the head losses, etc. So that's required for the fan. Now let's look at the available fan pressure. Well, that comes from the manufacturer. Sometimes they give it as a table. Sometimes they'll give it as an actual plot, but you'll have something that gives you delta P fan U versus Q. And so this we'll call the available fan pressure. We don't know what Q is yet. So to solve for Q, we set delta P fan U available equal delta P fan U required, and that will give you some Q. 
This is best illustrated graphically. Delta P fan U versus Q. And the operating point will be where delta P fan U available equal delta P fan U required. That's our operating point. This is available. The required one will look something like this. So if I solve that steady state steady flow equation for various Qs, various flow rates, what's going to happen? Well, as Q goes up, the irreversible head losses go up. All the minor losses, remember there was a V squared term in there. The VP itself will go up, velocity pressure, rho V squared over two. Well, that goes up as Q goes up. This pressure may or may not change, but we will definitely have delta P fan U required go up and the available go down. Where they meet, this will be the operating point. So there will be some Q operating and there will be some delta P fan U operating. If I put this particular fan into this particular system, this is where the operating point will be. And it's not necessarily at the maximum efficiency point. This would be your eta max, but it just so happens that I'm at some operating point here. So this is my actual eta at the operating point. So we'll call that eta operating right there. Now let's do an example. Let's take an exhaust system, and a lot of times it can be approximated as a parabola, like you see here, this blue curve is like a parabola. Delta P fan U required is 1307, and the units work out. The available fan pressure curve from the manufacturer is also a parabola. That's this red curve here. Let's calculate the flow rate and fan pressure where this system will operate. As I said above, all we have to do is equate delta P fan U available to delta P fan U required. So basically take these two equations and equate them, and the only thing that's unknown is Q, and so you plug in the equations and solve for Q any way you can. Analytically, use trial and error. You can use Excel, which has what if analysis, where you tell it what you want and it'll iterate for you and find proper Q that will give you that. You can do this in MATLAB or any other software that you want. But it turns out that delta P fan U, 220 Pascal, so that would be both available and required because we force those to be the same. And this occurs at a Q equal 0.410 meter cube per second. So this is our operating point. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.